The main menu is the fundamental aspect of every game and also the very first thing that the players will see after booting your game, which makes it the first impression for every player. That's why we should spend some time creating it to not scare players off in their first minute. The main menu is the navigation hub where we can change settings, run the game, load save data, check out some credits or extras or simply exit the game. In this tutorial I'm going to show you basic and very simple version of the main menu as well as the more visually appealing for the players. But that will be the second part of this tutorial. At first let's focus on the simple version. The main menu in Godot will be a new scene. So let's click here on add new scene, let's click on 2D scene and we've created node 2D. Click Ctrl S and let's call it main menu. Right click on node 2D, add child node and we'll need control. To the control node we'll add buttons and later we'll use texture button but for now we'll add a simple button. So let's click here, again button and one more. And why not another one? Let's give them a proper name. Start extras options and exit. We don't see much on the screen right now, so let's focus on that. Click here on main node 2D, add child node and color rectangle. We need to make it bigger to cover our whole screen or camera to be precise. Let's change the color. Okay, nice. And remember to move color rectangle to the top because otherwise it will be on top of our buttons and we don't want that. It's simply our background. Click on one of the buttons and in the inspector on the right type the text that you would like to show to the player. And let's do that with every single button. Extras, options, exit. For now they are too small for the screen so let's change the font size. Click on one of the buttons and on the right in the inspector theme overrides font size. I believe 50 will be enough for me. And let's place the button somewhere else, here on the right for example. And we need to do that with every single button. When this part is done, let's move to the GD script and connect it all. So here on Node2D and attach a new script. We won't need that process function. So let's delete it and by clicking here on the left side on every single node and clicking on the right the node we've got signals. So to connect it we'll use pressed. Connect extras pressed options and exit. Great. And to see that it actually works let's type here print start pressed. That way by clicking on the start button we should see in console start pressed. But when we start the game we can notice that it's not visible. And that's because we should make the main menu as our initial scene for our project in Godot. Let's close the window. On the far left corner click to the project, project settings and here on the left run. You can see that the main scene is currently pointing to the inside floor 0, which was the scene that I've showed you before. So click here on this folder icon and pick the main menu scene. Close the window and run the project again. And here's our menu. Now we can check if the signals that we've connected from the buttons are actually doing something. Click here on the options. It does nothing because we've got the pass in the function, so it should do nothing. But by clicking on the start game, we should see a text in the console. Click here, start game, and here it is, start pressed, nice. But what exactly we should do here? Get back to our code and instead of print start pressed, let's type get tree dot change scene to file. And Godot gives us some suggestions. In my case, I would like to pick inside floor zero as it's the main scene for my game. Unfortunately, I don't have prepared extra scene and option scenes, but if you have those, simply do the same thing. Exit is very common and we don't need a scene for this one. Let's delete this and get tree dot quit. We can save it 
and run the game to check if something changed. So by clicking start the game we should change the scene. Click on start game and we're in the game. And by clicking the exit button we should close this window. And those were the very fundamentals of the main menu in Godot. It looks nice, but let's try to make it more enjoyable for the players. And to do that, I'll start with changing the node type from buttons by clicking here with the right click, change type to texture button. They all disappeared. Click on the start and on the right inspector and here textures and for this tutorial I've prepared some PNG files and they are here in my menu folder and start game normal drag it and drop it here in the textures normal let's change the anchor by clicking here and top left in the inspector you can notice that we've got a few places for our textures normal will be shown when nothing is happening pressed is when the player pressed the button Hover is when the players got the mouse over the button, disabled if you won't click that, and focus is when the player has mouse or keyboard focused on the button. And I've prepared two states, normal and pressed. So let's add the press one. It's almost the same with a different color inside of it. And right now we need to do the same thing with every single button. So let's speed up this process. When we've got every texture covered, we can go to the inspector and type scale, layout, transform, and because they're too big, I would like to change them to 0.8 or even smaller to 0.7, as well as changing their placement on the scene. To make it more appealing, we can add some sprites on top of it. So here in the scene, add child node, sprite to d and same as before i'll add my logo drag it and drop it here in the texture transform and to rotate it i simply add minus one here and by clicking shift i will drag it to make it bigger let's save it and run the project and here we've got the issue because while i'm clicking on the start game you can see that the options are highlighted because they are pressed and the bug is here when we click the options you can see that the orange frame is way bigger than the text itself and to change that we need to click here on ignore texture and keep centered then let's get to the layout transform and size in my case y should be the same for every single text so 120 and x let's type 500 now you can see that the orange frame only covers the text and it won't overlay with any other buttons on the scene. So let's do that for other buttons. It should be fine now. Run the project and by pressing the options button it should change the texture of only options. And because we didn't add any logic to options and extras buttons, they won't trigger anything. But we can see that the press texture is appearing. And that's the final result. Don't get me wrong, there are many ways to improve this. For example, you could add twins to make the sprites floating up and down or making it animated. And on the other hand, you could add smooth transitions between scenes. So when you click the start game, there is a fade in and fade out animation before the player sees the next scene. Or maybe a special soundtrack that will play in the background. Those and many more you can learn by clicking one of the video that is shown on the screen right now. So don't stop your education here and click on the next video.